Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ableton certified DubSpot Los Angeles instructor, Thavius Beck, broadcasting live from the DubSpot LA DJ room. I have a new tutorial that I'd like to share with you guys, and it focuses on a topic that not many people are aware of, which is the fact that we can warp multiple clips at the same time. We can basically select all of our clips in the arrangement view, the last one we select becomes our visible guide, and then any warp markers or changes that we make to that clip, all the other clips will follow suit. This is extremely useful when you're working with stems. So let's check it out. Wham! Most people aren't that aware of this feature, at least in my experience, uh, but it can be very useful when you're doing a remix or you're working with uh, backing tracks from an artist, things like that. If you need to properly warp multiple stems and have them all adhere to the same timing changes or the same warp markers, this can be a very effective way to do it, all right? Now, uh, the source material that I'm gonna be using are some stems from an artist named Skylar Gray. Uh, Skylar Gray's written some huge hit songs for a lot of different artists uh, and put out a record through Interscope last year. It actually worked as her Ableton Live guy in like one man band for a little while, taking her stems, bringing them into Ableton Live and getting them properly warped so that we could then place those stems into different scenes within Ableton Live. And each scene would basically launch a group of stems that are associated with a song. So we're not gonna go that deep into it, but I will show you how we can take these multiple clips and warp them all at the same time. Now, in order for this to work, the clips all have to be the exact same length, okay? That's a very, very important distinction to make. And if they are the same length, what will happen is, right now, I don't have warp on for any of these clips, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn warp on for all of these. I could have selected them all at once, uh, but that would have ruined the surprise. So, <laughs> let me go ahead and turn warp on for all of those. All right, so now what I can do, all these stems, they're all the same exact length. I know because I exported them myself. So if I select this clip, and if I hold shift and select all of these clips, what will end up happening is the last one that I select, in this case, the drum clip, is gonna be the one that's visible down here. So I'm holding shift. Now look at that, they're all selected. It says here there's five clips. You see this little candy stripe that's letting me know that multiple clips are selected. And I'm looking at the drums, okay? But if I go ahead and make my sample window bigger, if I start to stretch the drum clip, you'll notice all the other clips follow suit. They're all adhering to the timing changes I'm making by moving this transient marker. It's pretty cool, all right? Now, let's say that maybe I didn't want to use my drums as a guide and instead wanted to use the vocal as a guide. Well, I could just simply select it in the reverse order. I could select the drums first, hold shift, and then I'm gonna select the vocals last, and now the vocals are what I see. So now I could use my vocals as a guide uh, to warp everything against, okay? And again, just to quickly demonstrate how easy we can do this, I'll put a warp marker there, a warp marker there, and now look, all the audio is stretching the same exact way, okay? So this can be very cool if you want to do some timing changes to certain aspects of your audio, or again, if you don't know the tempo of something, you need to get everything lined up, uh, this can be pretty useful. But a couple things to note, all right? You might see over here, uh, we have the warp button, we can change the warp mode, we can transpose and change the volume of all the clips at the same time. But what we don't see is the start and end parameter here for the start and end point, and we also don't see any numbers for the loop point, okay? Uh, and that's because we can't change the start and end point of multiple clips uh, at once, all right? Another thing you might notice is that, well, you didn't notice it yet because I haven't shown you, but <laughs> what you will notice is that if I right click on one of these transient markers here, I don't have the option to add a warp marker or set my one there, okay? I can add a warp marker by double clicking, but I don't have the ability, again, to set the one there, okay? So when it comes to changing the timing of the, of the clips uh, or establishing where the one is at, that's a bit more difficult to do with multiple clips, all right? So I'm gonna show you a way that we can use this technique and still find the ballpark tempo here. Once we get that set, then we can start to make some other changes, basically alter the timing of these clips uh, all at the same time, all right? So first things first, let's play what we got here so we can see how close or how far we are from the actual tempo. I'm gonna turn on the metronome and we'll play this from the beginning. Okay, so we're not we're not really there. The tempo's not quite right, okay? Now, I wanna figure out what the tempo is, uh, but like I said, if I uh, go into the drums here, if I've selected everything like this, we'll actually start with the vocal, hold shift, select the drums last. If I select everything, I don't have the ability to change where it's starting at. I can't right click here and say set 1.1.1 here on the one of the drums. 
Uh, and that's typically what I would do to help me figure out what the tempo uh, of the whole entire song is. So one approach uh, that I like to use is to take the drum stem and I'm gonna simply copy this, Command C, go over to the session view and paste this into a clip slot, Command V, solo this track and I'm gonna warp the drums. I'm gonna warp like two or three bars, well, two or four bars of the drums just to figure out what the actual tempo is, okay? So playing the drum stem from here Okay, I know that this is the one. So I'm gonna right click, set 1.1.1 here. So far so good. All right, now this has a pretty steady tempo. I probably could just right click here again and go to warp from here straight. Now, if you're warping something that doesn't have a very steady tempo where it wasn't played against a metronome or something like that, you might be better off manually moving the content against your beat grid. So for example, this kick here uh, is pretty obviously the beginning of the second bar. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So I could just grab the transient marker above this kick and then slide it to the beginning of the second bar here, okay? Which then moves everything else. And just by moving that one transient, it looks like the rest of the clip is pretty much on beat. Now, once I move audio content in the clip below the warp button in the clip settings, it's telling us the new tempo, the tempo that Ableton Live believes is the original tempo of this clip. And it says 138.97. I'm pretty positive the original tempo is 139, not 138.97, mainly just because most beats aren't produced where it's at a certain tempo 0.97 or 0.48 or whatever. Usually it's gonna be a whole number or 0.5. So I'm gonna go a little further down into the beat. I can see it's pretty much on beat the whole way. Okay, so the tempo that I've got here it's saying, yeah, 138.98. If we go here to the very end, see at the very end, it's starting to drift, okay? Everything looked pretty good for the first part of the tune, and then at the very end around bar 97, that's when we're noticing the tempo drifting because this tempo isn't exactly accurate. It's really close, but if we move this last little part, now it's saying 138.99. I'm just gonna assume the tempo is 139 BPM, okay? So if I wanted to, I could click on the warp marker itself, and now the tempo is not grayed out. Now I could actually type in a tempo, 139, okay? Now, I'm only doing that just to verify that 139 BPM is actually the tempo. If I play this and skip through, I shouldn't hear it like jump or go off beat at all, okay? Nice, okay, so I think 139 is my actual tempo. So at this point now, we're gonna go back to the arrangement view, but first, we're gonna type in our tempo. One, three, nine, hit enter. So now, if I go back to the arrangement view, I gotta hit my back to arrangement button, so I'm hearing everything from the arrangement view first. We already enabled warp on these clips, and when we enabled warp, uh, it assigned the project's tempo, which is 120 BPM. All right, so what I wanna do is, now that I've set the tempo of my project, I wanna warp this and have that tempo be assigned to the clip, all right? So I hit warp. Now it's saying, do I wanna keep the clip's current timing? Choose yes to insert warp markers so that the clip retains its current timing. Well, the thing is, yeah, I do, because I want it to be laid against my arrangements beat grid uh, the way that it currently is. I've changed the master tempo to 139 BPM, and if I go ahead and play everything now, let me just go ahead and turn warp off for the rest of these. Okay, they're all unwarped. So now if I play this, So we've got it on beat, everything's cool, all right? So now what I wanna do is I wanna re-warp everything or turn warp back on uh, and make it so that 139 BPM is the tempo that's assigned to all these clips, all right? So I'm gonna select them all at once and you'll notice when I hit the warp button, 
it's asking me, do I want to keep the clip's current timing? What that means is, do I want to keep the timing of the unwarped clip uh, in relation to my current tempo, okay? At 139 BPM, the timing of all of these clips is perfect because the original tempo of these clips is 139 BPM. So do I want to keep the clip's current timing? We just listened to the current timing and it sounded right, so I'm going to hit yes. It's going to ask me this five times because I've got five clips. All right, and now if we look at the clips, they're all selected, okay, just like we had before, but if I select just one clip, it's 139 BPM. They're all 139 BPM. Nice. So now the first clip is selected. That's the vocal. I'm going to hold shift. The last clip I select is the one I'm going to see. It's the drums. That's there. Now we got the drums. Okay, so now everything is on beat. All right. So big whoop. Now what? Well, check this out. Just to illustrate how cool and useful this technique can be, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it so that one part of the hook is going to have different timing than the rest. We're going to do our loop here. We're going to start from bar 21 and we'll have a, yeah, four bar loop will be good. So what I'm going to do, again, we have all these clips selected. I'm going to basically make it so that these last two bars is going to stretch out. We'll move the timing of the snares. How about that? Let's see. Yeah. We're basically going to offset the timing of the snare, so it's going to be an eighth note later. All right. Uh, so let me see. We'll move you right about there, and we'll move this over there. All right. Now, as I'm doing that, you can see, it might be kind of hard to see, but all the other clips are doing the same exact thing, all right? So let's hear how that little change in timing affects the song. At this point, all these changes are kind of silly. I'm just doing this to kind of illustrate the point that we can and everything will follow suit. Also, if the warp mode that we're using doesn't really suit the changes we're making, we can change the warp mode of all the clips at the same time. Beats is probably not the best choice. Complex might be a better choice. Let's see. So pretty interesting, very cool. The possibilities are nearly limitless. Uh, I'll allow you guys to let your minds wander and see what you can do with this technique. But like I said, the point is we can select multiple clips and as long as they're all the same exact length, then we can warp them at the same time. Now, one last little tidbit that'll help you guys out. You might be wondering, well, how do I get the clips to be the same exact length? What you can do is you can simply bring in a clip of any length and if you consolidate it for the right amount of time, it'll be the proper length. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have a little loop over here and I'm gonna drag this in. And this loop is very short. It's clearly not anywhere near as long as the other clips. If I try to select this clip first and then select all the other ones, they're all selected, but I don't see all the clips, okay? Now this one, I didn't enable warp. If I enable warp and I do this, still, it's not gonna work. And it's telling me six audio clips with different lengths are selected. So what I need to do is I need to basically make this clip the same length as the other ones here. And an easy way to do that is to select one of the clips, one of the stems that's the proper length, and then I'll hold shift and select this clip as well, the short one. Now you notice it's selected the same length of time for this stem. So now all I have to do is just deselect the stem and I can do that by holding command and then clicking on it. So now that's been deselected, only this clip is selected, but more importantly, this entire length of time, the same length of time as that stem has also been selected. Now I can simply right click and consolidate. Now this will create a new audio file, uh, so just be mindful of that if you're trying to save space on your hard drive. Uh, but after it consolidates, I will have an audio clip that's the same length as my other ones, and then I could throw that in there and start warping that along with the other clips. So we'll let the consolidating finish. Bam, all right, now look, my clip, 
So the same length as all the other ones. So now, selecting this, hold Shift, click there. Ah, now, here's a good point. It's saying there's six audio clips with different warp markers uh, that are selected in six tracks. Do I want to reset my warp markers? If I reset the warp markers, then that will mean I can see all the clips at once. It'll basically get rid of the changes that I made, but it'll allow me to now warp everything together, okay? So the changes that we did to the drums are not there anymore, but now I can also affect this new clip that I've consolidated. And just to illustrate that point, you see that stretches along with everything else, all right? So there you go. You have the ability to warp multiple clips at the same time in the arrangement view. As long as they're all the same exact length, it's just a matter of bringing them in here, making sure warp is enabled for all of them. Select one of the clips first, and then the one that you actually wanna see down here in the clip view, select that last as you're holding shift, and there you go. Get your multiple clip warp on. On that note, I'm signing off. This is Thavius Beck, Ableton Certified Trainer, Dubspot Los Angeles Instructor, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, Dubspot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dubspot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.